Hi guys. Well, it should be an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization. Here on where are we? Tuesday, July eighteenth, twenty twenty-three. But of course. It is not a spectacularly gorgeous day. Uh, imagine that. But I was just um, looking at the weather. You know, this place that I had down in Florida that I sold, uh, my former snowbird place, where today, this is a little town called Inverness, Florida, north, uh, northeast of Tampa, it is 100 degrees with a heat index of 120 degrees right now in Inverness, Florida. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I'm looking at this smoke and this 79 degrees that we are enjoying here in paradise. And guys, you know, if I have to, if my choice is 120 degree wet bulb versus a little bit of wildfire smoke. Uh, I'm gonna take the 79 degrees and the smoke. Uh, if, if these are the, the collapse conundrum. But anyway, guys, I just think, you know, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this story on uh, Collapse Chronicles. So this is as good a day as any just to look at an overview of a story. When I first went down this whole collapsitarian uh, rabbit hole in 2008, I've been doing this for 15 years, 15 years, uh, in 2008, they were talking about all of this fear-mongering about, you know, the collapse of the American dollar. That any day now, any day now, the, the dollar is no longer going to be the, well, the petrodollar is as more honest name for it is no longer going to be the world you know just the reserve currency and the day that happens at any day like we're going to wake up one day and the american dollar is no longer going to be the world reserve currency and i guess the united states is going to you know overnight descend into some sort of third world hellhole uh, and, and all of this uh, and, and, and this story has stuck right on through. I remember the day that uh, in 2017 when I was interviewing that, uh, that uh, person we do not talk about here on uh, Collapse Chronicles in an effort, you know, to keep the collective IQ here a little bit above average, I hope. You know, when I was interviewing uh, that idiot uh, in the mud hut, uh, he was uh, cranking up uh, 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 this very story in November of 2017 that any day, so, you know, and uh, I, I did not mention that anywhere in the interview. Here we are. It is 2023 here on Business Insider, which I guess is just now called Insider. Welcome to the dollar war, the global battle that will decide the fate of America's economy. And so... Um, so this is by a journalist named Phil Rosen. Phil Rosen, uh, who acts like, and I believe in that, he knows more about this subject than I do. Uh, I, I sure as hell 
and am not qualified to comment on this, but uh, my guess, after reading this article, I'm thinking that Phil, just by I'm putting it on the pendulum, and this sounds about right to me. Uh, so anyway, for any of you guys like me trying to make some sense out of all of this fear mongering, you know, where on one side you have the doomsday prophets and on the other side you have the complete denialist, uh, the truth is probably somewhere in the middle. And uh, Phil Rosen from Business Insider, I guess, it knows as much about it as I ever will. Take it away, Phil, and tell us what uh, this is all about. Um, a global battle over cash will decide who rules the world economy. The U.S. dollar is not just for Americans. Every country in the world relies on it. The greenback has been facilitating the flow of money and goods around the world for over a century. Buying or selling oil, usually done with dollars. That usually, you know, is where the big asterisk comes uh, in. I don't know how many years ago that the answer to the question buying or selling oil would have been always done with dollars. Today, it is usually done with dollars. Countries issuing government debt, usually the price of those bonds is in U.S. dollars. For generations, the greenback has been the safe haven for investors when markets crash and systems go haywire. The U.S. even reminded everyone just how influential the buck is when it effectively froze Russia out of the global financial system with sanctions last year. Now, uh, I, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and debate that point, but anyway. But, if you listen to certain corners of the financial world and the internet, the dollar's reign as the world's financial instrument of choice could be, could be coming to an end. Motivated by a mix of politics and economics, countries from Israel and France to Russia and China have signaled they're looking to start doing more business in a currency other than the U.S. dollar. Central banks have also started to tiptoe away from the dollar with currencies like the Chinese yuan, the Japanese yen, and euro taking up a growing portion of global reserves. Now again, this is according to this guy. These doom and gloom scenarios are overblown, financial experts told me, but in classic conspiracy fashion, there is a kernel of truth to the freakout. If you look hard enough, the percentage of financial tra transactions done in U.S. dollars has slipped over the past few decades, and the percentage of countries' cash reserves that are held in dollars has been sliding. These shifts, while notable, do not mean the U.S. dollar's dominance is going to end any time soon. And I, I guess he could have written the same sentence in 2008 when all of this doom and gloom fear-mongering was flying around the internet. There may be changes around the edges, but as the Stanford finance professor Chen Zizu told me, there is still no viable alternative to cold, hard American cash. 
what currency would those countries hold instead? Zhu said, we need something that looks like money that will act like money. If you don't hold dollars, there is no alternative because everything else is too small or subject to the same risks as the dollar, but worse, close quote. Sounds perfectly reasonable to me. While the U.S. dollar will not be replaced as the world's reserve currency overnight, a concerted effort to eat into its dominance has the chance to erode the greenback's place in the world and cause real shifts in the financial system. If America wants to stay on top, the U.S. cannot take the dollar's status for granted. Over the past five centuries, only a handful of countries have issued the bills the world uses to conduct financial transactions, the globe's reserve currency. Becoming the issuer of the global res reserve currency is about trust, whether it was the Dutch gilder, the French franc, or the British pound sterling, people trusted that the value of that currency backed by the country's government would stay steady enough to be the benchmark for a transaction. Political instability or prolonged economic downturns can chip away at that trust until one day the currency is supplanted by cash from a country that is more powerful, more powerful, more economically stable, and therefore more trustworthy. For the past 102 years, the U.S. has set atop of the currency heap, and the globalized nature of the world's economy means the U.S. dollar has achieved a more powerful status than previous reserve currencies. This so-called exorbitant privilege places America on top of an asymmetric financial system, grants the U.S. major trade benefits, and mutes the blowback of other nations' economic fluctuations. This dynamic also means that the Federal Reserve, can you hear the uh, conspiracy theorist panties wadding up when they hear the term the Federal Reserve? These people who by and large have no clue what the Federal Reserve is or does anymore then they have any clue who the World Economic Forum, uh, certainly the Club of Rome, or even the United Nations is. They could not pass a fourth grade test on any of those subjects. It's unbelievable how, how people who know nothing about anything about any of these subjects suddenly become experts. So uh, the Federal Reserve, which is responsible for printing and controlling the supply of U.S. dollars, is closely watched around the globe. The rest of the world pays far more attention to its policy decisions than, say, the European Central Bank or the People's Bank of China. Ron Temple, the chief market strategist at Lazard, told me that the U.S. dollar achieved this vaunted status thanks to more than a century's worth of rule of law and stable markets which helped earn the confidence of investors. Quote, People in any country around the world 
can be found with $100 bills tucked away for safety, he said. That especially became true after World War II when the U.S. dominated manufacturing and trade while other countries were still rebuilding after the war. The U.S. was just an economic powerhouse with robust institutions that could withstand the partisanship and conflict, close quote. Today, nearly 60% of international reserves are held in dollar-denominated assets according to the International Monetary Fund. <clears throat> And it is by far the most used currency for trade. Data from the Bank of International Settlements show the dollar is involved in about 88% of all international trade transactions today. A good litmus test to see exactly how much sway a reserve currency has is to look at what happens during financial crises. And for the past century, investors always rush to assets they can convert to dollars. Countries like China or Saudi Arabia are doing what they can to, quote, thumb their nose in the direction of the U.S., Gregory Brew, an analyst at the consultancy firm Eurasia Group, told me, but until American assets are no longer viewed as the best option, in times of catastrophe, the dollar will not lose its seat at the head of the table anytime soon. Still, Given that the country controlling the global reserve currency holds that status of an average of 94 years, history seems to indicate it is high time for a successor. So, while the timeline may be long, talks of de-dollarization are proof that there may be a new movement afoot. The global economic order as we know it will end with Operation Sandman. When Operation Sandman is launched, the emerging theory goes, 100 countries from around the world will sell off trillions of dollars worth of U.S. government debt in a coordinated effort to undermine the value of the dollar and break America's dominance over the world's economy. The move will be calamitous for America and the global order, but in time, the effort to break the U.S. dollar's hold on the world will open the door to a new hierarchy of economic superpowers. If that all sounds a little far-fetched to you, that's because discussions of Operation Sandman is mostly confined to chatter on economic and currency conspiracy accounts on Reddit and TikTok. This mother of all dollar conspiracies, as one Reddit user called it, would certainly be a momentous start to a new chapter, but there is little real-world indication that it could come to fruition. <coughs> I think we live in a conspiratorial time, you raised as Bruce said. There is an abiding interest in certain online communities in the idea that the global economy and specifically the world of fiat currency, is teetering on the brink of some kind of systemic collapse, close quote. Despite the crackpot in inclinations of Operation Sandman's biggest fans, they do get one thing right. There is clear evidence that the world is 
de-dollarizing Stephen Jen, the chief executive of Urizen SLJ Capital and a former economist at the IMF, caused a stir in economic circles with an April note to clients that declared the, quote, erosion of the dollar's reserve currency status has accelerated in recent years at an alarming pace, close quote. By Jen's calculations, the shape of global reserves held in dollars saw a sharp decline in 2022, eroding at nearly 10 times the average annual pace of the past two decades. In 2003, the dollar accounted for roughly two-thirds of global reserves, but Jen said his data shows that has now fallen to about 47%, a much lower mark than the IMF's 60% estimate. Other groups have failed to detect as steep a drop, he told me, because they don't account for fluctuations in the underlying value of the dollars in central bank coffers. Jen told me that while countries beyond uh, that while countries beyond the U.S. are still frequently using dollars, the appetite for the currency has cooled recently. Quote, we have seen a sharp decline in global interest in U.S. dollars, he said, after 15 years of very gradual declines, we have seen a plunge, an absolute plunge, in the past year, close quote. Most shifts away from the dollar can be chalked up to politics. The world is waking up to just how America-centric the financial world has become, Jen explained, a far cry from the multipolar nature of the, color, of the cultural and political landscape. And the economies in developing countries have grown larger and more sophisticated over the past few decades, which means there are fewer reasons to stay embedded in a financial landscape that hinges on the dollar and the Fed. Said Jen, there is a legitimate argument to ask the question of whether other countries should cope with a unipolar currency world. There is a disconnect between the two, the financial world and the real world. And uh, guys, I guess I did not realize that uh, this article was a book-length article. I will put the link on to this. But uh, we're just going to scroll down, assuming the reserve battery has not collapsed. So what is your bottom line, brother, on this? All right. Bottom line. The panic is overdone, but the trend is real. It's easy to scoff at conspiracies on Reddit, but there is truth behind the whispers of de-dollarization. It is real and it is happening, but at a far slower clip than the recent headlines may suggest. Rather than shrugging it off entirely, however, America's leaders from Congress to the Fed should take all of the talk as a reminder not to take the coveted status for granted. Fooling around with Fed policy, threatening to default on U.S. debt, 
for hastily imposing financial sanctions, Lazard's temple said, is not doing America any favors. A century of having the top currency should not lead anyone to believe we'll have a century longer. Quote, we should always recognize we get tremendous benefits from maintaining the dollar status. I don't think anything is permanent, and other countries could be ready to use something other than the dollar at some point. The exorbitant privilege that we have had for decades is not a birthright. Close quote. Uh, all right, guys. So I'm with Phil on this one. I'm with Phil Rosen. The panic is overdone, but the trend is real. And, uh, of course, uh, you can pick your poison and say that about it. I would generally say the collapse of the AMOC, according to my reading of the tea leaves, for whatever it's worth, uh, the panic is overdone, but the trend is real. I'll throw sea level rise. I'm going to sound like book hermit here. I guess the panic somewhat depends on how old you are. A lot of these things depend on... I'm 63. All right. From a 63-year-old Doomer's point of view, uh, the panic of sea level rise is overdone, but the trend is real. Uh, we said that about the AMOC. Uh, okay, but of course, uh, there are some the other way around, like the Amazon tipping, the, the Amazon tipping point panic uh, is real, and the trend is uh, just uh, undebatable. Uh, <laughs> the panic is overblown, but the trend is real. I can, uh, I'll have to do a, I'm going to have to think on this one. How many subjects is the panic overdone, but the trend is real? And how many, uh, places is the panic not done enough? I'll have to think about that for another day. But right now, I'm going to wrap this up because I realize uh, that I'm talking to myself and the overblown panic of this smoke event. Uh, needs me to uh, do what? Anyway, the panic of the t summer of 2023 Canadian wildfire smoke is overdone, but the trend is real. Come back in five years and the summer of 2023 will barely be a footnote. Get out there and enjoy your overdone panic while you still can. Are you uh, panicking, little dog? What do you think? Is the panic overblown, Sancho Panza? You seem uh, like you're in full-scale panic. You look like you're having a wildfire smoke panic. You're having a collapse of the American dollar panic. You're having a sea level rise panic. 
Anyway, I need to go tend to my panicking little dog. Bye, guys.